was uh, an interesting trip, I will say that. Uh, we took 15 people down to the ramp. Um, I got to know some of these kids. Uh, I had an opportunity to get to know them really well. Um, it was, I feel like I've never known Adam more. Um, <laughs> we've had plenty of uh, meme-worthy experiences. Uh, I learned what a one-star hotel is like. <laughs> Uh, I'm still feeling it. <laughs> um, got three hours sleep a night. I've had nine hours sleep in the last three days. Um, we revolutionized Taco Bell's uh, waiting system. Um, it's on the internet. You'll see it, I'm sure. Uh, we stopped the fight, yeah. breaking out between strangers. It was crazy. Um, one of the most beautiful things, though, was, uh, you know, if you know, I'm sure most of you know, Aaron and I, like our heart since we took over the youth has been that they would encounter God, and that's been our number one focus. That's been what's driving it all. I'm, we started off when they first asked us with an all-night prayer and fasting, um, just believing for revival in the young people. Sorry. Just, um, touches my heart it's uh as anyone who's um engaged in any kind of ministry you learn that one of the most challenging things is uh consistency because you know as you know like the devil just attacks people who are trying to move forward and this isn't just like official ministry in church i'm talking about you go to the prisons you go you, you tell people about jesus it's like targets on your back you know and i just i don't want to speak for aaron but i know that we're just there's been a time of a, a, like for me I'll just say for me there's been this dry season where you know what's in your heart and you've declared it and you've prayed and you fast but you don't see the manifestation and so this weekend when I'm watching these young people surrender and I'm not just coming down just talking about coming down to an altar I'm talking about true surrender in their lives like laying things down and saying, Jesus, encounter me. When I'm seeing young people come alive who've been raised in church, but they're seeing Jesus as like, man, it's not my dad's relationship with God. It's not my dad's walk with God. You know, like they've heard the stories, they've seen miracles, but always at someone else's hand. The most beautiful thing for me this weekend was seeing, I'm not sure exactly how many confirmed because we just haven't had time to like, sit down and decompress and that is not an exaggeration but i know for sure five kids filled with the holy spirit speaking in tongues it was just so beautiful we had kids going out in walmart and praying for the the sick and i really truly believe that this is the start of something this is the catalyst now i know in the, you know when in the past when, when we go to these camps and you do things like that, it's like after a couple of weeks, it kind of fizzles out. You had a moment at altar and then it goes back to the real world. Well, last year we went to the ramp and every single person, we've seen a level of fruit that has continued, that is sustained. And so I really truly believe that this was a life-changing experience for this group. And the last thing I'll say is um, several months ago, Greg was talking about joy but he's talking about the justice of heaven. Sorry. I just remember he was talking about Stephen and Paul. And he was saying that Stephen was murdered and Paul stood by. Paul was actually probably the one who debated him. Who riled up the crowd, the religious. And they murdered him. And Greg was talking about justice. And I was sitting right there. And I said, God, what about Stephen's parents? Where's their justice? Because they still lost a son. Because he was talking about Paul and how Paul's life was changed. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, Paul is their justice. Paul was their justice. Their son was murdered in the streets. But what happened? God's justice was Paul was set on fire. He had an encounter with Jesus, and his life was forever changed. And so this weekend, the most important thing, the thing that just 
has filled me back up was I've seen the justice through all the pain. I've seen seeing the kids get filled with the Holy Spirit, encountering God and having the purpose of God awaken with inside of them that, man, God chose me. It's just so beautiful. I'm sorry, I'm a mess. It's just so beautiful. There are a lot of kids, man, we've had some amazing testimonies. I'm debating if I'm going to put somebody on the spot right now because no one came up with me. <clears throat> All right, Hannah, let's go. Abigail. Yes, Abby. Like I said, it's one thing to go to a service and, 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 and laugh and dance and worship and have fun, and we had so much fun. Like, honestly, I laughed on this trip multiple times until I cried, mainly because of Adam. <laughs> that kid is hilarious. But it's just so beautiful. <laughs> It's so beautiful when there's real change. And I'm telling you, when the, when, the, when the Holy Spirit comes in and stuff changes, the anointing breaks the yoke. And that is exactly what happened this weekend. I want you guys to share um, this one especially. Oh, man, I'm going to cry. I'm already a mess. Come over here, Abby. Uh, so pretty much ever since I can remember, I've never been comfortable in, like, groups of people. I have always had, like, really bad anxiety in crowds and <laughs> so this year um, the first night I had we were walking in and I had the worst panic attack I've ever had in my life like I couldn't move Johnny almost had to carry me out like I almost passed out it was awful um, and I expected like Saturday to be like Saturday morning I expected that to be the day that I like really got hit and nothing happened. And then again, Saturday afternoon, I expected to that that would be the day that something would happen and nothing. But Saturday night, I'm in the back worshiping and I have my eyes closed and I open my eyes and there's this big like, group of people in front of me. But instead of getting panicky, <laughs> I just started laughing. Yes. <laughs> and I was there was not a single part of me that was anxious at all. All right, uh, I'm sorry. This is too nonchalant. <laughs> I, I don't know what's, what's happening right now. Listen, this was so, she says I had bad anxiety, and everyone's like, yeah, anxiety. No, we're talking about crippling anxiety. This is not a representation of it. She, this is, like, so bad that she can't eat in front of people. You want to know whenever I realize what happened? When we're sitting at McDonald's at midnight, and uh, she's behind me, and she's ordering a cheeseburger, and I just glanced down. I double-taked. I was like, every single meal I'm asking her, are you eating? You know, are you eating? I'm like, just tell me you're fasting or something, so that way I'm not, like, worried about it, you know? But th I'm talking about crippling anxiety, PTSD, like, uh, like it shuts down, can't physically move. There was an altar call before for this very thing, and she couldn't physically move to go up there. And then... She's smiling and talking, coming up in a group, and it's just, this is so beautiful. This is a real deliverance, you know? Like, this is like something special. But listen, we're not just telling you this because, because it's a cute story. What we're saying is this breakthrough that happened for her is available for ever, anyone who's struggling with depression or anxiety. There's breakthrough available. The Holy Spirit will come in and break it and fill it with joy, fill it with laughter. It's so beautiful. Thank you, Abby. It, honestly, for her to even be up here, man, you guys, your response is not, this is, this is amazing. That might be the best, I mean, kids getting filled with the Holy Spirit, that's pretty high up there, you know, so this might be like, man, that is just, that is incredible. Most people don't. <laughs> so um, most people don't know this, but um, a few years ago, there used to be someone in my life that was abusive towards me. Uh, made me feel like I had no self-worth and I didn't know who I was. And it was so bad. I cried myself to sleep almost every single night, and I couldn't sleep. 
I did things that I really probably shouldn't do. I took muscle relaxers just so I could fall asleep at night. I had struggled with suicidal thoughts and just taking a bunch of pills and just going to sleep because the pain was really hard. But I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want anybody to think I was weak because I didn't fight back. So I decided not to tell anyone. But when I went to the ramp, God opened my eyes and he took me back to all the moments where I felt like I was at my worst and showed me that he was there holding and weeping with me. And my heart was broken in so many pieces, and he said, let me take all the pieces, and I will put it back together for you. Thank you. Thank you. It's awesome, John. Come on. All right, I don't know how I'm going to follow all that. Oh, with are the, you leaving? Just running away. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you so much. All right. Um, yeah. So I this weekend for me um, was more of a losing something. I don't know if you guys know this or not. Uh, <clears throat> my voice is kind of pretty shot. Uh, but yeah, like David was saying earlier, this weekend was nothing but like joy at its purest. Um, I mean, from the moment we all came here and got in the van to take off, um, the, the struggles we had to be able to get going and like get everything together to do it um, was just God himself working for these kids' lives. Um, and like we get down there, we're driving, and like the road was nice and it was easy, and then like there was little moments of Adam mistaking another van for ours and chasing it, saying, wait, wait, <laughs> I'm right here, don't leave me. Um, it took David yelling his name twice and me honking the horn for him to realize, oh, they're right there. Um, Adam's the greatest kid in the world. Like I, I'll tell you what, that kid is just comedy at its purest. Uh, he's, he's great. He's fun. Um, getting to know him, some of the other middle school kids from our school um, that like I get the opportunity to teach them PE twice a week, but to have a moment outside of the classroom to sit there and really figure out who these kids really are as individuals, that they're not just a student or somebody else filling a seat every day, but they are somebody God has created and has made precisely for who they are and has precisely put a calling in their life that there is a phone ringing on that calling that only they can hear and that only they can answer. And to see the ability of these kids to stand out every or all day, basically, on Saturday, all night, Friday night, to stand here and worship God with every bit of their being, not knowing what's going to happen. Some of these kids that has, haven't been there haven't experienced a conference like this. And, like, we had expectations of what's going to happen because of last year. And the whole service and everything played out 100% different than what happened last year. And so we're coming with our own expectations to see these kids get hit. We see them get hit and changed in different ways. It was less of something, some physical, just like manifestation of God's presence and them just going all out worship to something deep down inside. Those dark places God shined light on. It's like it's the Holy Spirit just came in on Saturday night. And the best way I can describe it, it's like it's not a cloud that's out of reach. The Holy Spirit came through like a heavy fog covering a mountaintop. Not only did it hit everyone's highest peaks, but it hit the lowest lows in the valley. The spots that you hide from yourself, he came through to touch. And when he did it in these kids, there's a beauty in that that I never thought I'd saw in God before. To stop my own worship and notice these kids getting touched in a way that I wish I would have accepted back then, that I was too stubborn to realize, that I put God in such of a box that he could not come out of, but to watch these kids get it. And we stand here every week praying, hoping these kids get it here, hoping these kids get it at home. And then we go out somewhere like this, knowing something's going to happen, and God just turns the bucket upside down. He just dumped it all out for these kids, and not only our kids, but kids across this nation. To see kids from all over this great nation step forth asking God to have a prayer language for just them and him. 
something that no one else can hear, no one else can interrupt, but it's for them to talk to him and for him to talk with them. That's a one-way line. I imagine it like a little kid with a can on a string trying to talk to their friend in the other room, but it's Jesus sitting there. Just telling these kids they're worthy. And the way today's society tears them down, tries to mold them in this image of, not, of who they're not. Like Hannah said, God took those broken pieces that the world has shattered and these children. He has picked it up. He has remolded it into an identity of who he says they are. Just like he does it for these young ones, he wants to do it for the old and everyone in between. We are all God's children. The age of ourselves is nothing to him. When he sees us, we are his child, just like the day we are born to the day we enter his kingdom. And I'm telling you, like Dave was saying earlier, this past season I've been walking through myself, it's like a desert. Dragging my face to the sand just to try to get the next drop of his presence to continue on. This weekend I was expecting something to hit me to change my life around so I can seek God with more. But it's like the oasis I found hidden in the desert wasn't for me to get satisfaction from, but was for them. To watch them drink from the waters of life as they're praising God, that gave me energy. That gave me purpose. And a better understanding of who I am in God, knowing who they are, and better knowing who he is. It's okay if we just pray for anyone. I, I, I just want to take this time. First, I want to say, you know what? I got to know Johnny in a different way, too. Have you ever heard this man sing Taylor Swift and dance in the car? <laughs> People were taking pictures and video. Oh, it was beautiful. It was. It, well, it was. I won rock, paper, scissors with a random kid in another vehicle, yeah, so. It, it, it was something. I beautiful. I mean, good word. I, be, I believe that, though, for what these kids experience, like if you're here and, and you have struggled with anxiety or depression, or identity. I believe that there's a, a, a breakthrough. What, when there's breakthrough for one, there's breakthrough for all. When there's breakthrough for one member of the house, it's available for everyone. And so um, there are a lot of other testimonies. Man, there are so many, but I don't want to ruin it by telling them because they, just because the kids aren't here. And so if we can just pray real quick. If there's anyone like that, God, I just thank you, Lord, that you are such an amazing God. And that you sent your son to take every disease, every curse, every pain. We just thank you that in salvation there's fullness of joy. There is peace and there is happiness. God, I just declare over anyone who's struggling with these things, Lord, I just command it to be broken in Jesus' name. We just oust that demonic oppression in Jesus' name. Lord, I just ask that your Holy Spirit would come upon them and fill them right now, wherever they're at. Even people watching online, God, I just thank you for touching them right where they are. Lord, that your presence would come into the room. Lord, we just surrender it. Jesus said, take my yoke. Lord, I just thank you for surrender in Jesus' name. The last thing I'll say before I turn over to Greg is, listen, before there can be demonstration of power, before you could walk in the authority, there has to be surrender. And one of the things I noticed with Abby's story is she came to a place to where, you know what, I can't fix it. I can't get out of it, but I'll surrender it. And I believe that true salvation, true encounter starts at that simple place to where it's just like, Lord, whatever you have, I'll take it. And I'll give you whatever you want. I'll give you everything. If you could turn the air conditioners off. If <laughs> 
That's okay. It's all good. I love it. I want to say thank you to uh, Hannah and Abby from Sharing From Your Heart. That is not an easy thing to do, to get up in front of people. Um, um, what a, uh, are you kidding me? Somebody's now messing with the other lights in the back. That, uh, Um, but it's a testament that um, someone who's been set free from anxiety to get up and talk in front of people, they actually say it's the number one fear when they do their, uh, <laughs> like, worse than dying is talking with in front of people, you know. And so um, I want to say thank you to Abby and Hannah for being vulnerable, for being honest and sharing from your heart. And I believe definitely um, that he makes us whole again and so that we can go and help others to be whole as well. And this is all of our testimony of what he's done for our life that we're able to take it and that God uses it to bring freedom to others. Um. For the sake of having mercy on you guys tonight. You heard me two services this morning, right? We can have a, a, a family meeting. I don't always tell the back stories or maybe I would say my favorite side of the story. I'll probably go too far the other side of the road, and I think it's cool and pretty neat to talk about it. It was uh, the past couple weeks especially have been, let's see, a spirit-filled person would say prophetic. Another person would say chaotic. But, um, but I, I love it, kind of. I love it. But, you know, when you prepare for a message, you, you know, it's not like a shotgun type of thing or you have something prepared. And yet it's your greatest heart's desire that God's plan is what's done. And you'll spend this time, uh, spending time with God, and then get up, and then he just, you know, just takes it and, you know, blows it all away. And, and um, so it was two weeks ago that... Um, When it happened, and I'm standing up here like we do when it's transitioning from worship to the next place, and and uh, oftentimes it's I mean I want it to happen every Sunday, but oftentimes it will be like um, obviously I'm standing here, but it's almost like I can see from like uh, you know a different point of view. And um, and when when you get lifted up like that, it's amazing. You know that there's something different behind it. Usually, one of the results is that um, I don't have control as much over my voice, and I end up yelling too much and losing my voice in that service. It's because I'm trying to push out something that I feel so strongly, and I don't think I'm getting it across. And that's a regular, uh, you know question that goes on in my mind is that I really, I don't know if I did a justice of getting that across, but in that service, it started there, and, and, and I'm trying to hold my composure because when you feel um, a supernatural thing happen, oftentimes it's not easy to hold your composure, and as I began to share, um, and then I just said, okay, that's it. I'm, we're going to go off of, I, can't, I think we're talking about desire, I don't know, but then we went into the valley uh, Ezekiel, and, and like we, we totally took this spin completely from one direction to the next, and I don't know if, if you're in there uh, for that service or not. I believe it was the early service, and, um, and there's a point 
why I'm sharing all this. Um, but, you know, it, it's in those moments that um, are so exciting. Oftentimes, I, I'll be up here, and, and it's definitely not in the notes. And I'm like, wow, God, that's good. And then I look at you guys, and you're just like, and I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, that's a lot better than your amen. And when I say that, that's one of those moments, you know. Um, it wasn't something that I had prepared or anything that I knew. I was like, wow, God, that's so good. Um, so it's in those moments, and, and, and I know that there's something going on besides whatever prepared message that I had studied for or prepped for, prayed for. Um, but then, then there's something else that happens, and we just in that service released. Uh, it was a one of those moments. Second service, someone comes in and goes, "You know what? The Lord told me the answers in the wind." Well, in the Valley of Dry Bones, we had just got done praying as a as a church um, for the winds of the north, south, east, and west, and and they came in in that second service, and I go, well, "You know what? That's what we just did." And they go, "What?" You know, I go, "We just as a church, that's what we prayed together." Then somebody else came up and they said, um, "You know, I saw." two angels, and they were standing on uh, beside you, and one of them w had their arm around you. And, and um, I, I love it, just because I love, you know, obviously we believe in the supernatural, and what looks like a normal service maybe to some, uh, it's, I love it when, when we, we get our eyes opened up to beyond what's right in front of us, if that makes any sense. And, and, um, and it's always encouraging uh, when when these moments happen. And then this Sunday morning was very similar that, uh, you know, from one service, I think we talked about bitterness, early service, second service. We we never got there. We talked about the sound of praise. And um, um, there's beautiful, incredible things that happen. And we've been speaking about joy and desire realized. Not that anything's necessarily changed. I, you know, we could still pray like we would pray on any given weekend for what we're doing. But something begins to happen, something that's, that's the desires of our heart. When we took the van back from the youth trip, I couldn't help but being taken back in time. I mentioned, I, I'll remember my first youth trip. I was 13 that I took. We went to see Fire by Night. Blaine Bartell and Fire by Night. But it was in a white van. And here we are, just a couple of years later. <laughs> and it's this white van that we just took these youth for a power encounter with God. And I'm just like, God, this is amazing. Lord, this is our heart's desire for the justice of heaven from one generation to the next. And I thanked the, uh, the adults, Johnny and David. <laughs> Have you guys ever been called adults before? I didn't think that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, or the older ones. <laughs> but it just kept going. They said, you know, you don't have to thank us. You did it for us. And now we kind of honored to do it for your kids. And Paul is speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 1. Follow after charity or love and desire the spiritual gift but rather that you may prophesy. For so many years, I had such a strong passion for the spiritual gifts. I began to question on Greg, are, is there something wrong? Like, should you really be asking this much? Like, really, you're supposed to be asking for Jesus, right? So, like, are you focused too much on the wrong thing? And I can remember those rolling through my thoughts those when I read that 1 Corinthians 14.1, and I'm like, yes. It's biblical right there. Thank you, Paul, for giving me permission to go after the things of God with a desire. And um, obviously, I, I would hope to believe that when I'm 
preparing for a message that it is something that God is speaking. Uh, prophetic sounds like a deep charismatic term, but it's encouraging word for the body. It's to encourage, it's to uplift. And yes, th there's different facets of it. But see, my heart's desire has always been that if I'm standing here in a moment on a Sunday, that even though I've got a message, God, I want you to rip the pages up, and I want there to be the message of heaven that you have released. Okay, that's, that's always been my desire. And so often, <laughs> you look up uh, the, uh, uh, the word frustrated in the dictionary, and my, my picture was right there, you know. Um, we've joked about it. I said I was going to have mercy, but I'm going to keep going. If I start talking about frustration... I got a I got an arsenal of testimonies and um you know I I would be seeking after God and and really I mean I'm reading books of my heroes or listening to them and then I'd hear some of the keys along their journey and I'd get up and I can remember <laughs> I can remember do, giving it my best you know and uh, one in particular that started back with Catherine Kuhlman that she said not a word, you know, in the place. And she got this big auditorium full of thousands of people just silent. And she said not a word. I mean, she was serious and commanded it to be silent. And in the midst of the quietness, the power of God fell and hit the place in this beautiful way. The, this uh and the, many of you was talking about the same thing happened. I can remember getting up one time and I'm like, let's just be quiet. And absolutely nothing happened but just people being quiet. And I can remember shutting my Bible, going, going home that night like, okay, God, what's up, you know? Uh, but I love it because he says to, to desire the spiritual gifts specifically in prophecy, but desire spiritual gifts. But he's saying follow after love. Follow after charity. And there's something about that as we keep love first, that it removes the frustration. Because, God, if I'm just so much in love with you, that if I get up and I minister a sermon that's been prepared, then, God, I'm going to love you through it. If something happens between here and there and it all changes and I feel I'm not going to go into all the details, but different supernatural things happen, then, man, I, God, I just love you. I love you, and I follow after love. And there's something about the spiritual gifts that if you're following after love, the spiritual gifts become a natural, supernatural byproduct by following after love first and foremost, but the spiritual gifts come into operation without struggle, without stress, tension, Without frustration, how many can say amen to that? And 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 um, as the worship team comes tonight, we're going to have a time of prayer specifically. I'm going to ask for some of the youth uh, to come help and pray for anybody here um, tonight. And as uh, David and Johnny and Aaron and the ministry team. We're getting um, messages in from online right now, people asking for prayer. And so, everybody's standing tonight. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this earthen, this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I love that so much. And God, I thank you for your light shining in our hearts and in our lives here tonight. We thank you for the stirring of love and a passion for you, God. Lord, we thank you. It's our heart's desire to walk with you in a supernatural way that we're able to minister to people we come in contact to beyond the natural. We want to minister with you, Lord. 
Help us to be ones that follow after the passionate love. Help us to follow after you, oh God. We thank you for the desire realized. Tree of life. We thank you for the amazing testimonies that's happened in our youth over the past couple days. And we thank you in advance for the testimonies that are going to happen right now. And if you're here tonight and you want special prayer, maybe for anxiety, maybe it's something that you've just had a battle with or whatever your prayer request may be as you step out of your seat. Come on up here to the altar as, uh, as the ministry team and, the, and Aaron and David and Johnny. And I would love, Abby, for you to help. Come up and help to pray for someone who's just received a breakthrough with anxiety. I think she's going to have the powerful hot hands if that's you tonight.